all I want is just one nice, simple summer transfer window. I didn't feel like too much to ask, but if you're Manchester United, it feels like it might be too much to ask. Everything, I mean, we're in full panic mode at the moment. We really are. After the Brighton game, we were linked with like, what, Arnautovic and then Rabio kicked off and then everything since then. And then since Brighton, we've been linked with like Casemiro, we've been linked with Caicedo. And now, according to David Ornstein and Fabrizio Romano, the deal for Rabio is no more. I'm going to run through and explain all of that, explain what's happened with the Rabio story. <clears throat> I'm also going to speak about Caicedo from Brighton. I'm going to speak about Casemiro from Real Madrid, about Frankie de Jong, about Eric Ten Hag, about John Murta, and the unfolding madness that is Manchester United's 2022 summer transfer window, which was such an important one in a genuine rebuild under a manager who's progressive and needs the tools he needs to succeed. And we're giving him a blunt knife in a sword fight. Earlier today... Look, you the, the Rabio story, I mean, look, the madness of the Arnautovic story, jeez, you're, you're not going to get a better example than that of how crazy United's summer transfer window has been. Fabrizio tweeted this uh, late earlier this evening saying there's still no agreement between Manchester United and Rabio's camp on personal terms. The deal is now stalling as the salary requests are considered too high. And then David Ornstein has followed up and said the following. Adrian Rabiot's proposed transfer to Manchester United is now highly unlikely to materialise. The Athletic has learned. United reached a broad agreement with Juventus over a fee, but were unable to do the same on personal terms. The gap between their salary offer and his expectations mean the potential deal is not progressing as things stand. A revival cannot be ruled out. However, at present, United are looking at other options. And genuinely, Casemiro is mentioned as one. Uh, Casemiro is mentioned as one. Let's just talk about that a little bit later. It is believed the Premier League club will be prepared to make Rabio one of their top earners alongside Bruno and Ericsson. But his representatives, who knew that dealing with Veronique Rabio was going to be an issue? Honestly, I, everybody, every single person saw that coming. It was a massive waving red flag like that. In the same way that, well, the stories behind Ron Artovich and his character, we all know about those. Hmm. Who could possibly have predicted either of these? You, me, every single United fan. That's why both all of us were worried when the Rabio and Ron Artovich stories came out. But as I said, his mother Veronique is thought to have requested a higher level than Bruno and Ericsson, given that he's going to be an agent, free agent. And we were like, nah, no chance. It means that we're now in live talks with other candidates, including Casemiro and also Caicedo, thought to be in the final stages of deciding where their budget will be spent. Well, isn't that nice, considering we've got 15 days left in the window? Good job, United. Well done. Very proactive move there. But as I said, I mean, seriously, seriously, who could have seen it coming? Apart from every single one of us. What in the world, Manchester United? What were you expecting? Literally, literally a pure reputation about it. A con con complete reputation. I'll be honest and say, look, I'm, f I'm fine with the idea of, of Rabiot not coming in. For me, it just, it, the, the, the idea of him coming to Manchester United, it had too many red flags behind him. About the character, and lo and behold, the people that he surrounds him with. It's a bit like Jesse Lingard. I don't think he was helped by the people that he was surrounding him with. I don't think Rabiot has particularly been helped by his mother in that sense. We need midfielders and we are reaching full tilt panic mode. And I don't like to use that word unnecessarily. I don't like to stir the pot when I don't think it needs to be stirred. But trust me, man, we're stirring. We're stirring with vigor right now. Because Rabio, whether or not I thought that he was a right, I, right character to bring to the dressing room. At 27, he's got years ahead of him. If Eric Ten Hag could have got the most out of him, he could well have turned out into a decent signing. But lo and behold, he is off the cards now. And I've genuinely got to have a conversation here about Casemiro. Look, man, I love Man United. I want us to be holding big ears at some point soon. But Casemiro is coming nowhere near Manchester United. Not right now. He's not going to leave the, Euro not going to leave the European champions for coming to Manchester United. They effectively with no midfield and absolutely no sniff of the one Champions League considering not in it this, this season. <clears throat> Why are we taking the piss out of ourselves? Is this, just, is this just his agent pushing him towards us? Surely that wouldn't be an active move from Manchester United to go towards Casemiro because we will be wasting our goddamn time. And now the second name mentioned by David Ornstein there is Moises Caicedo. 
He's not the first person to have mentioned it today. That will be uh, Sky Sports chef, Darmesh Darmesh chef, mentioned it earlier today. And I felt when all these all these reports coming out, linking Casemiro and that, I thought it was a bit weird, bit really odd. But I'll tell you what, now that this has come out, it all makes sense. Manchester United have gone in late for Adrian Rabiot. We've met his mum. She wants more than we're willing to pay. We're now not going to move for Rabiot. So we move on to Moises Caicedo. Of course, he's a United fan. But he was a United fan a couple of years ago when we turned down the opportunity to sign him for three to four million pounds. And also, Antonio Valencia gave him the thumbs up too. We still didn't decide to move for him. Lo and behold, he turned out to be an excellent talent. A wonderful signing by Graham Potter. And yeah, he dominated us in that 2-1 win at Old Trafford. Only a couple of weeks ago. And if we try and go after Caicedo now, with our current squad, with our current needs, sitting bottom of the Premier League, if we were going to be able to sign him for 5 million a couple of years ago, add a zero on the end of that. And that's what we would have to pay to sign him now. And that probably means that we would not be able to afford him. This summer has all been about... <clears throat> Sorry, I zoomed in too far. That looks absolutely horrendous. Has all been about this lad. Frankie the Young. I still can't rule out the possibility that he'll join at the end of the window, but I I I can't hold out much hope. I really can't hold oh, I can't hold out much hope. It's a really thing, hard thing to say about United in the, in the transfer market because none of it makes any sense. None of it really made sense in my opinion of us going after Rabiot. I just didn't see how he was going to be top of any list that we had. And I knew the difficulties of his mother. And I knew the difficulties of dealing with Rabio himself. And lo and behold, it's blown up in our face. And the idea that we think that we can go and lure Casemiro away from Real Madrid to this Manchester United. It's laughable. I really think it's a bit laughable. Just because I'm, I'm aware and I'm a realist in terms of the current circumstances and context of our football club. I'd love him to come. Casemiro's right up there with Verratti in terms of that asshole midfielder who lets everybody else play the piano carrier, as Fred likes to call himself. He's the piano carrier. But Kai said it would be a brilliant signing. But there's no way we're going to pay 50 million for him. Then again, if we're not spending 75 on Frankie de Jong, then maybe we will. But what are we trying to do to Eric Ten Hag? Are we trying to cut his legs off before he's even started? I said, I said this summer was the acid test for John Murto. I felt that in terms of the behind the scenes changes at Manchester United, I felt a lot of good was done in the early parts of this summer and the tail end of last season. I felt like the structure of the club was we we're doing a little bit of a, a house cleaning project. But we didn't bring in somebody who can control transfers. A, not, not Paul Mitchell per se, but a Paul Mitchell character. Somebody with that experience and that knowledge and also that contact list and that, that base. Instead, we've had John Murto. I remember I did a picture. I went to a wedding a few weeks ago and I was like, cheers. Cheers, John Murto. I think I might have to quote tweet that and dig myself out because John Murto right now has been learning on the job and has been spectacularly failing on the job. Whether it's been Frankie de Jong, whether it's now been uh, Adrian Rabiot, whether it's the idea that Manchester United genuinely think that we can get... Ca Jeez, i love to have egg on my face here. Casemiro will be an absolute dream of a midfield signing. I just don't see it happening. I don't see us paying the money required to lure Caicedo away from Brighton at this point in time, given the fact the season started, given the fact that we're bottom of the league, and given the fact that Brighton know we're in just full tilt panic mode. Because in the last... What? Well, since the Brighton game, we've been linked with Rabiot. That's now not going to happen, according to David Ornstein, unless something dramatically changes in the wage demands. Uh, we've been linked now with Casemiro. We've been linked here with Caicedo. Of course, we've been linked with Frankie de Jong all summer long, and uh, none of them have materialised. That line there from David Ornstein there sums it all up. Manchester United are thought to be in the final stages of deciding where their budget will be spent. How in the world are you at the final stages of deciding your budget when there's two weeks left in the transfer window. That's the conversation you have at the very beginning. I don't know what to think anymore. It literally is full tilt panic mode. I don't want to spread uh, negative 
propaganda, if you want to call it that. But these are just the facts in front of us. If Rabio's off the cards, Casemiro, I don't think is going to happen. Caicedo, I think, will get outpriced for. De Jong, what's happening there? Are we going to get a midfielder? Just get Keenan Skulls back. Something like that. At least we got... No. Actually, I don't know what to think anymore.